you know where you are seated, yeah? Where? Exactly. You know, I thought you were going to say where I'm seated in Love Dominion Church. <laughs> I had a story. I don't know how true it is. You know, uh, you know, when we're growing up, and you know, one way or the other, I know some of us have spoken. At certain point, we've spoken. Uh, we've spoken down on Mount Zion movies. Uh, you know, but uh, so there is a movie group in Nigeria called Mount Zion. Uh, I mean, I'm from Nigeria, yeah. So there is a, you know, movie group. Uh, it's called Mount Zion Movies or whatever. And um, so they, they, they did lots of movies like in those days, and they still do lots of them. And you know, at some point, you know, some of us, we got so caught up in the, um, you know, in the revelation of God's word that we began to query some of, um, some of the movies, yeah. He subjected, you know, those movies to, but you know, recently I just did a flashback and I said, oh, man, these these movies they, they did they did some good, you know, good work on my mind, because I remember there was one movie uh, where the in the 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 guy was a traditionalist. Uh, he was he was um, an occultic guy, yeah, and he got converted. So when he got converted, he received the gospel. Yeah, his name is Ishawuru. Yeah, so he received the gospel, and he got filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, three witches or all kinds of you know, they started coming to you know to torment him, and he was so bold, and he would speak to them in the name of Jesus, removed the authority on anything, and you know we grew up seeing those movies, and some of us. You know, we were spawn into uh, the part of authority. We just, you saw those movies, you saw those movies, and you believed that you can do and undo. Okay, so those are positive influences that we, we got from those movies. And I think we should pay attention, we should celebrate those, you know, those effects more than all the rubbish that we, you know, we saw that we thought, you know, you know. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. Yeah, yeah th those movies. There's a way they impacted that sense of authority. And you believe that, yeah, now that you're born again. I, but I, I remember one of those movies where someone spat, someone spat out from the window. So it was a church. It was a church building. And someone had spit, okay, had saliva in his mouth. So he spat out of the window. And an angel was at the other side of the window. And the angel slapped the guy. <laughs> <laughs> slapped the guy. And the guy was not himself for a long time, you know. And see those movies, we became very conscious. Ah, ah, we must not move. Ah, if you move, angels will slap you. You know. <laughs> so it gave us a sense of you know uh, reference. Anyways, uh, so we're uh, we're looking at believers' authority. Okay. Um, uh, praise God. I am born of God. I am born again. I am born again. Yes. Yeah, so in love dominion, when Confessions are made like that. It's not for me alone. Okay, this is not theater. Yeah. So you you put yourself in that confession as well. Yeah. Say, I am born of God. I am born, of God. I am born, again. I am born again. Praise God. So again, where are you seated now? In heavenly places. Yeah. Far above principalities and powers. Every dominion, every authority, every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. Nothing is impossible for you that have believed. Nothing is impossible. And those authorities that I said that you are above, it includes your family, your life, your career, your finances, everything. I love something that you know, Sister Prayer did you know, when, it was, when she was giving a charge. She said something. She said something. She said, even if the devil tries to take you back, he said you can as well go back with all the authority that you have. You don't understand what that means. So you can go back. Listen up. You can go back. So the devil is taking you back to your story, your mistakes in the past, or something. You can as well go back, amen, with the same authority. Hallelujah. I remember I told somebody one time, I said, see, there is a concept of moving on. Yeah? We, I, I don't move on by ignoring. Amen. We don't move on by ignoring. If you move on, and you ignore. You ignore to move on. 
you are deceiving yourself. Amen. I repeat again. Listen up, everybody. You don't just move on and say, uh, it has happened, it has happened. I move on. No. Because what happened, amen, has an imprint. Wherever you are moving to, the imprint is following you. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Are we together? He said, I move on, I move on. No. We don't ignore to move on. We solve, we kill, we cancel, we zero to move on. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yes. That's why I told us Jesus or God did not ignore sin. He will never ignore sin. What he did was he judged sin. Because God detests sin. God hates sin. God hates lying. God hates all those things. And what God did about them was he judged them. He did it. He did not move on from sin. So God did not move on by saying, hey, you have sin. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's, let's do as if it did not happen. No, 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 no. God will never do like that. What he did was, because God is a just God. Amen. God is a just God. Somebody said, why didn't God, you know, after man fell, okay, and, you know, why didn't God just, you know, erase, because he's almighty, he could as well erase, you know, you know, the timeline. And that reminds me, because, you know, we, you know, we talked about that. God can as well erase the timeline and say, okay, this is not happening. Adam, you did not make this choice. Adam, you did not, you know, you know subject, you know, the Bible says the whole creation are subject to vanity, not willingly. Okay, but by the reason of him that subject the same, you know. So, so let's say, you know, we raise it so that the whole creation is not subject to vanity. So let's have, let us just begin from Jesus. Then God will be an unjust God. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? God is a just God. He would like things to be done, you know, in a just way. So in doing that, he provided solution, a just solution. He solved the situation. He died for man. So our, listen, listen, listen. The death of Jesus, everybody, the death of Jesus for your life, for my life, is not just a vital occasion. It's not just something that happened, you know, in time. It's a legal activity. It's legal. In other words, you can present it as an evidence that the case has been solved. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? It's a legal occurrence. Praise God. Hallelujah. So God does not ignore things. He solves them and he moves on. So the same thing, you can you solve things, you can go back in time. Either you go back in time or you go back in presence anyhow. But ensure, remember who you are. That you are seated together with Christ in heavenly places, far above principalities, and exert your authority. And say in the name of Jesus, this thing, I counsel you. Amen. Amen. That's how it works. Praise God. So you go back. I love that. He said you go back in the spirit. And I told us, listen, I told us that in the spirit, which is in the heavens, are we together? There is both that was, that is, and is to come. In the spirit, amen. Again, listen up. In the spirit, there is what? That was, that is, and that is to come. So in the spirit, there's no time bound. You're not time bound. You can as well go here and pick things. You can go here and pick things. You can go here and pick things. Mm. Praise God. Moses was caught up in the heavens, in the spirit, and he saw, amen. He saw the beginning of time, and he saw the ending of time. You know, you know he did it. He saw that. So he saw the glory of God went Faded away. In fact, Moses was caught up and he was in Genesis. Praise God. Imagine that. You're caught up in the spirit and you are in Genesis. Genesis. In the beginning. I just imagine how it would have been like God created the heavens and then and he saw God, you know, said, let there be light. And right there in the spirit. Oh, so the first day was ended. Seven day was ended, and God said, Let's separate the light and the darkness. Let this light be called day. And the night. he saw everything. Genesis 2. And God formed man from the dust of the ground. Moses wrote it. He saw it. And he wrote it down. Imagine that. It's, amen. Praise God. He saw that. He saw Adam knew his wife, gave her to Cain, gave her to Abel, saw them grow, saw them in the spirit. How many days? In the, see, listen, 
in the spirit and he's seen things of 1,000 years, things of 2,000 years in detail. Listen, in the spirit, listen up, sometimes in the spirit, look at what happened. How did this guy knew? I have not even started my message yet. How did the disciples know on the Mount Transfiguration that this is Elijah and this is Moses? Eh, they just knew. They said, let us build one. One for Elijah, one for Moses. They did, Jesus did not do introduction. In the vision, they just knew. Huh, this is Elijah. Huh, this is Moses. All of them knew. They just knew. Let us build one, let us build two. In the spirit. Revelation, the book of Revelation. John. He was in the spirit. And he saw him. And he, he saw him. He seen time unfold. Hallelujah. Beloved. You are also born of the spirit and you are of the spirit. You can go in, you are in the spirit. You can switch in the spirit. How? By praying. You can set things right. You can set foundations right. I'm talking about family foundations. You can set that right. Apostle, what are you talking about? Yes. You can set your destiny, your, your, your generation, you can set them right in the spirit. You can set things right. Because it's the spirit. You are from above or you are from beneath? Above. Amen. And what did he say? Because we are doing a recap, a summary. What did he say? He said, he that is from above is what? Above. Is above all. Okay, let me do something for you. Okay? I will, not, I will not go beyond that. Because I see that, okay? For many of us, we are not yet catching up. But you will catch up. You will catch up. Listen. Time, time is a creation. God created time. Okay, listen up. Te, 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 te. Is that faster than a second? Ah, it's faster. But you know what a second is? God creates time. In the beginning, God creates the heavens and the earth. The earth was that form and void, and God called the First day, uh, I mean, God called that, um, how did you put it? The first day. When he finished, he called it the first day. And after a while, he said, uh, let the sun and the moon, the, the stars, let them determine seasons. Let them determine seasons. Hmm. Listen, listen, listen. Time, again, okay, I think I, I mentioned this doing uh, Otis concert. I mentioned something a little bit. He says, for for everything under the sun, there is a time and there is what? A season. a season. And there is a purpose for every time. Am I saying it right? Look at it, Ecclesiastes. Before I say things I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> God help us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Ecclesiastes and chapter 3 verse 1. He said to everything... There is a season and a time to every purpose. Yes. Under the heaven. A time to every purpose. A time. A time to every purpose. Hallelujah. Think about this for a second. Oh, two, three, five seconds. For everything. To everything under heaven. There is a time, what? To, they said there is a season, to every season rather. There is a, an, um, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. A time to every purpose under the sun. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. A time to every purpose under the sun. Every purpose. There's a time. And God is not oblivion to this. It creates time. Listen. You are not here without a reason. You are not seated. You are not seated and hearing the sound of my voice without a reason. The trumpet is blowing all over the world. Men of God, daughters of God, sons and daughters of God, blowing trumpet across the globe. In India, in Australia, in the UK, everywhere. Sons of God. God is raising men. 
Hallelujah. Blowing trumpets. And we can hear their sounds. Amen. Sometimes some of us go off key, but we are sounding. We are sounding, yeah. You know why we go off key sometimes? Because human beings, the Bible says he has this treasure in 18 verses. Yeah. So because he has this air in 18 verses, but, but it goes off key, but sometimes we're hearing, we're hearing the sound. And we can say, no, no, this is off key, but there's a sound. Amen. Amen. You, you know, interestingly, you know, interestingly, uh, the way it sounds is this. It seems like None of us, actually, amen, can accurately blow the key or the, 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 the trumpet without missing one or two keys. It seems so. <laughs> Praise God. But we blow the trumpet still. And that's God's mandate. There's a time. There is a time to every purpose under the sun. Now, let me tell you something. Listen, listen. I, I think this is also going to, because I didn't plan all this. And I think this is also going to go prophetic. Yes. Hallelujah. God. Amen. Amen. Time. And that's why I love science fiction. And listen, listen. I think science fiction is the best. <laughs> movies, or, you know, genre, or kind of movies that has intruded the minds of men. That's my personal opinion. Praise God. There, there is one that I'm watching recently. What? No, no, no. They, they started a new Star Trek. Anyway, another one. That one has finished. Another, they started another one. Uh, Acolyte. Yeah, they started Acolyte. Now, this one I'm talking about, uh, Dark Matters. Oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> Praise God. So, so, so forgive me. Listen, listen. Just forgive me a little bit. Dark Matters. So when I saw Dark Matter, whoo, whoo, <laughs> praise God, yeah. Because, and, 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 and the movie, the movie or the series rather, you know, it intrigued me. Like I, I was, you know, I fancy it. You know, because you see how a man's choice, so there's a different motivus. And this guy, is, this guy created, you know, a black hole that he could go through one door and in that door, then he can, Enter different multiverses. So when he opens the door, so he has his, he has a version of himself in different multiverses. Well, I, I'm not saying there's multiverses, so. <laughs> but this is my point. And in those different versions of himself, he married almost some some, some multiverses. He marries most of the multiverses. In 90 percent of the cases, is married to a woman, to a particular woman. And this particular woman, you know, in another multiverse, the woman has been killed. In another multiverse, he was not married to the woman. Then, you know, but he has, the, there was a motivus that he had a broken home. He's married to the woman, but they are divorced. The children hate him. But in another motivus, is a peaceful home. Then he would go to the other motivus and check his choice. At what point did he make a choice that broke this home? Which choice did he make? Okay. So, you know, this is quite interesting. So listen, listen, listen. Because this is challenging. Listen up, everybody. Have you ever thought about it for once? That what would have happened to you as a person if you have made a different choice at a certain point in your life? Have you thought about it before? We are all science fiction people. <laughs> I mean, I think about it a lot of time. You know, I, I thought about it. What if, what if I had not picked the flyer that of Georgia? What if? What if I had not gone to the university that I first went to? What if? Amen. What, I, I mean, you, you've had what ifs, yeah? yeah? Good. But in any case, so listen up, I'm going somewhere. So wherever you are, wherever you are, you are here. Okay? Hey, what if you had not come to love dominion? So there would have been a different outcome. Are we together? But here you are. Praise God. Somebody say, here I, here I am. Praise God. I, I know, you know, that's, that's the same thing that, that comes before us every time. Where a man is presented with an opportunity to choose salvation or reject salvation. Adam was presented, if I, Adam was presented with the opportunity to choose salvation and he rejected it. 
It should be what if? Again, listen, we are going somewhere for everything. Listen up, everybody. Listen. Time. Who created time, everybody? And because God created time, know this. Time is measurable. So listen, you can measure time. In fact, we say second, minute, hour. We can measure time. God created, but it can be measured. It's directional. It can be measured. God dwells in eternity. He is not bound by time. But he has created us in time. We have age. How old are you? You can say it. Amen. It's bound by time. Okay. Listen up, everybody. Again, I said to everything. So there is a time for every purpose. Nothing is created by chance. To God. Are you getting, and we will give account for our time spent. If God has given you a time, you give account for it. Somebody told them, okay, uh, but you know, my life is like this. You know, I'm alive. I've not believed the gospel. The reason why you're alive, where well, there's still a time for every second that you are spending without Christ is an opportunity to receive Jesus the more. Praise God. I am going somewhere with this. Hallelujah. Even authority, listen, even authority exchange, there is time. Haven't you seen this before in the Bible? Where they would want to capture Jesus and Jesus would say, it's no time. Haven't you seen it? He said, it's not yet time. Because it is not, there's no purpose. The purpose is allotted to a time. There's a time. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? He said, it's not yet time. It's not yet time. And when it was time, he said, for the hour has come. Have you not seen that before? He said, the hour has come, and now is. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? He came, he came, he said, he told John, he said, do, do quick. He told uh, Judas. He said, do quick, do quick. Remember, they were eating. He said, do quick. Why? Because it's time. This is the, he said, look at it. He said, this is the hour of darkness. Remember? He said, he said, this is the hour of darkness. Time is not just counting. Willy lily. God has a plan in time. And you as a person, you must recognize that. You have to. You cannot just while away your time. You, you must spend it for God's purpose. You, that's, that's, why, that's why you tarry in prayer. God, what would you do in this season? What do you want to do now? What is God's o'clock in this my time? What do you want to do? There's a song we used to sing, and I've sang this song here before. God, whatever you're doing in the season, don't do it without me. Oh, don't do it without me. There's a season, time. Hallelujah. You know, the prophet, listen up, everybody. Are you following everybody? See, the God filled the Holy Ghost. He said, when the day of Pentecost was come, they were all gathered together in one accord. Remember? I, the, the teach. All my Bible verses say, I'm out of it. I'm out of it. He said, when the day of Pentecost was come, he said, they were gathered together in one accord. Okay? And, and when the Spirit of God came, they were filled and they spoke in tongues. And when the man of God came up, Peter, he said, this is that. That was spoken by the prophet. Hallelujah. Again, listen. listen. Amen. You, you will lose orientation if you are out of time. Have you heard of time deprivation? It's a theory in science, yeah? When you, when you, when you deprive, so they, they deprive people. They, they, take, they take people and deprive them of time. Sometimes people are deprived of time, deprived of location. It happens a lot in movies. When, <laughs> see, listen, listen. As a pastor, what happened today? Because I've not looked at scriptures yet. <laughs> you know, they, they will inject some people and, you know, they will slip off. And they, yeah, okay, yeah. And they not, they not put them under a bunker and lock the bunker. There's no wristwatch, no nothing. They are there for maybe two years. They're just throwing things. The sun is not moving. They're not seeing sun moving. Nothing is moving. You see that the place is entirely light, lighted or the place is dark. Then after like two years, they now bring them out and 
close their eyes and drop them somewhere. They deprive them of time. There's no orientation. <laughs> you are looking, where am I? What am I doing? What year is this? Where are we? What? <laughs> Amen. And you know, you know, you know, listen, listen. You know, you know, actually, a lot of believers are actually deprived of time. They are deprived of time. Many believers are deprived of time. You don't even know what is God's agenda at this moment. And you're running your race as you wish. You're just running your personal selfish race. Praise God. Say this to me. Say it's God's o'clock. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we are seated from we are seated in heavenly places, far above. Look at Ephesians. Let me show you something. Ephesians. Praise God. Are you following, everybody? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Praise the Lord. Ephesians end chapter one. Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, 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 uh. So let's read. Um, let's start from verse 7. Are you there? It says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he has made, which he made abound towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he had proposed in himself, which he has what? So look at that. Let's go back again so that we don't rush it. Verse 9. He said, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, you see, according to his good pleasure, which he has proposed in himself, that what? That in the dispensation of what? The fullness of time. He might gather together in one all things, both that are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him. Ah, praise God. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes of understanding. Ephesians 1, again. That we're reading that same place. I would like to read, you know, because sometimes when you read King James, you might lose touch of what the concept, what is it saying exactly? But I love King James. Ephesians 1, where did we read in the night, yeah? So he said, I'm going to read Amplified Version. He said, making known to us the mystery, the secret of his will, of his plan. And of his purpose. So listen, 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 listen. listen. He made known unto us the secret of his plan. And of his purpose. God, who creates the heaven and earth, has a purpose. Has a plan. Say to me, say, God has a plan. Say, I'm a child of God. You see? So, if God has a plan, shouldn't you be about his plan and his purpose? Exactly. So, look at it. He said, he has made known unto us the mystery, the secret of his plan. And it seems, listen, it seems this, his plans are not hidden any longer. He says, and, and it is this in accordance to, with his good pleasure. His merciful intention, which he had previously proposed and set forth in him. So where is God's plan and purpose? Again, where is God's plan and purpose set forth? In Christ. Okay? Are you following me, everybody? So God's plan and purpose is set forth where? In Christ. But look at it. Let's keep reading. He said he planned what? For the maturity of times and the climax of the ages. Did you see that? Is that written in my Bible alone? Did you see? He said, God planned for the maturity of times and the climax of ages. Everything has a plan. Everything. No, but let me say this. Listen up, everybody. Don't miss this out. If Russia is fighting with America, it's not God's plan. I get what I say. God's plan is set forth in Christ. So what we are saying is that in the midst of the noise, what should you be looking for? God's plan. And where will you find his plan? In Christ. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? So you find his plan in Christ. The same thing about your life. Everything is going here and there, here and there, here and there. 
You've got to learn to post, like I said, and search out his plan. And it's not far from you because you've got the spirit. And you run in his plan and in his purpose. Praise God. Look at it. He said, he planned for the maturity of times and the climate of ages to unify all things and air them up and consummate them in Christ. Both things in heaven and things on earth. So, listen. What, what is the climax of ages? What will happen at the climax of ages and the fullness of time? That everything will be unified where? In Christ. Both things where? In heaven and where? Did you see that? Are we together? Is this place, can you open the window because for ventilation? Uh, am I the one feeling the, you're good? It's open. All right. Praise God. Say, I'm born of God. Say, I'm born of the Spirit. Say, I'm born of God. I'm born of the Spirit. So listen, 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 think about it. If God would unify what is in heaven and on earth and consummate them in Christ, then the heaven will not be a destination. And the earth will not be actually. Rather, in Christ, we will be the destination. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Anyways, anyways, look at this. Galatians. So, in God's agenda, in God's plan, you have received the Spirit, yeah? And God has put His words in your mouth to go about, to use His authority to bring man, to bring men into the light of the gospel. The Bible says He has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into what? Into the kingdom of His Son. He has translated us. That is his plan. That is his purpose. That we will walk in the path of life. Hallelujah. That we will put his spirit within us. We will put it in our mouth. And we will exert his authority. Every boy and girl. Every one of you. That you will exert his authority. He said, behold, I give unto you power. To trample upon serpent and scorpion. And over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. That's what he said. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hmm. All right. Galatians. I will round up. I will round up with this one. You know, he says, heaven and earth will pass away. Amen. But not a jot of his word will fall or will fail. Heaven and earth will pass away. That's where we stay. You stay in the word. Hallelujah. You stay in the word. And the word is the realm. Okay? The, remember we said that? The word is the realm. You stay in the word. You stay in that realm. Because heaven and earth will pass away. There will always be, listen. There, I, I hope you're catching this. There will always be a new heaven and a new earth. It will always be. He said it. Peter said, the word that was then. The word then was destroyed by water. The word then. He said, but the one that we have now, he said, is reserved unto fire. So the word that was then was destroyed. And a new, so for every end, listen, there's a new beginning. The word then was destroyed by fire, by water. Right? Even as the word, listen, even as those words was destroyed by fire and water, it didn't mean that... Uh, it didn't mean that the, it ceased to exist, but a new system comes into place. But those who have the word, they abide forever. Those who have the word. So heaven and earth will always pass, but those who have got the word will always remain. He said, yet once more, there's going to be a shaking. And what will not remain will be shaken off. He said, we are receiving a, we are receiving a kingdom. Okay, look at it. Sorry. Uh, I said we should read that. Galatians. Okay, go to Hebrews. Ah, praise God. We'll come back to Galatians. Hebrews 12. Are you there? 
Hebrews 12, look at it. Let's read from verse 20, 25. It says, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape, who refused him who spoke on earth, most much shall we not escape if we turn away from him that speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the head. But now he has promised, saying, yet, yet, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Did you see? Did you see? Why is going to shake? Heaven and earth will shake. That's why I told us, it is not a going to heaven. Because heaven is going to shake. Hey, listen, listen, listen. It is not a go, It is not about a going to the heaven. Because it will be shaking. Earth will also be shaking. Look at it. He said, whose voice then shook the earth? But now once more he has promised that it will not only shake the earth only. But what? Also heaven. Listen, listen, listen. Next verse. Help me out. Next verse. And this word... Yet once more, signifying the removing of those things that are shaking, as of things that are made, and those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Whether heaven or earth, something cannot be shaken and it will remain. Amen. Next verse. What did he say? Listen. We therefore we receiving a kingdom. Which cannot be moved. Let us have grace. Let us serve God acceptably with reference and godly fear. What have we received? A kingdom that cannot be shaken. He said, For the kingdom of God is not the meat and drink, but it is in power, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And we receive in that kingdom. We cannot be shaken. Whether heaven, whether hell, where the eagles, the carcass are, the eagles gather. Praise God. You receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. How you get? I'm trying to say, don't worry yourself too much. Um, huh, what will it be? What will it be? Put your attention on the spirit. Let that be your focus. Don't be so bogged up with huh, what will happen in the future. Will my life be good? Will what is going to happen? <laughs> Heaven and the earth will pass away. But my word will remain. We have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. When you take God's kingdom in your family, amen, and there's going to be shaking, your family starts strong. It stands strong. Why? Because you have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Are you getting on track? So the flood comes. There's fire. There is flood. He said even if you pass through the waters, it will not overflow, it will not overflow you, um, um, overwhelm you. Amen. You pass through fire, it will not burn you. Remember? Hmm. He used the same thing. <laughs> Use the same thing. You pass through water, it will not overwhelm you. <laughs> you pass through fire, it will not burn you. The first world was destroyed by water. And the world that is now is reserved for fire. But he says, you pass through water, it will not overwhelm you. You pass through fire, it will not burn you. Because you have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Amen. The attention he that has ye, let him ye what the Spirit is saying. Praise God. I hope you're getting it clearly. He said again, the world that was then was overflowed with water, destroyed with water. And he said, this world now is reserved for fire. But you pass through waters, it will not overwhelm you. You pass through fire, it will not burn you. Why? You have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Huh? I have received a kingdom. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. So let us have grace that we may serve God acceptably and with godly reverence. Because you are a new creation. You are a firebrand. We have not seen your kind. Don't let the attention just be in the future, but let it be from now. Let there be a reflection in your family, in your speech, in your word. Hallelujah. When men are cast down, you will say there's a lifting up because I have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Did you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah? Yes, men will say, men will, they will cast down, but you will say there's a lifting up. 
attention is in the kingdom. He said, set your mind on things that are above where Christ is seated. Set your mind on those things. Jesus looked at them. He said, I am from above. You are from beneath. Believer's authority. And that's what I'm bringing to your attention again and again. I'm repeating this prophetically. There's a believer's authority. There's a permission that is granted in the spirit. A realm, a lease in the spirit for the one that is the new creation. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Come on. You are seated. Hallelujah. So let me help you a little bit further. Let me help you a little bit further. Listen, 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 listen. LDA and whoever is listening to this. Listen, listen. I said something. I said you can go back to foundations and restructure foundations by the spirit. So for example, they said, oh, your genetic makeup is similar to that of your mom and that of your mom's mom and your mom's 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 mom and your mom's 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 <laughs> Amen. They said there is a family tree. Amen. They said there's a family tree. Oh, that this is what happens when you are at certain age. This is what happens. And you're already seeing symptoms in your heart, in your body already. You're already seeing the symptoms. Are you going to trying to say? You're seeing symptoms. But yet, you have seen in the world that you are from the heavenlies. How do you do it? How do you do it? You go in the spirit. You go to the foundation and restructure things. You can do it. I told us, listen, listen. This is not 10-minute prayer. This is not one-minute prayer. This is not plus Jesus minus Satan. This is not a nominally spiritual santos. This is not. It will not. You cannot change anything with that. Or you cannot. It's not possible. So it will be latent in you. What you have will be latent in you. And the only time you will come, it, the only time you'll be conscious of it will be when the person dies. Because it's possible for a believer who has authority to die. You remember what he said? He said, those that died in Christ, he said they will be caught up first. Why? They know now. They know. They will, they, they will be quicker. They will be quicker because they know now. They know because a man who dies now, listen, a man who has been in the heavenly places all his life now dies. Huh? Oh. So I've been in heavenly places. This is me. He never knew all this while, but he just knew that. That's why the Bible says death will be swallowed up in victory. Yes, See, listen, listen. It is not a competition, it's not a fight. So the one who died in Christ is coming with victory over death. The Bible said they are groaning. There's a groaning. There is ah, no way. No way, me? I died? Listen, let me say, I'm serious, listen. listen. Any, any believer die, yeah? yeah? This, this is the echo that comes to my spirit. Any believer? Me? I died? I repeat again. I re any believer who dies, immediately there's a transition. What the echo that comes is this. Me? I died. Let me tell you, why? Pastor, don't say, Pastor, how do you know? How do you know? Have you died? <laughs> Listen, it's simple. Jesus conquered death. Jesus conquered death for the believer. That's why we don't say even believer die. We, we conclude that say they are sleeping. Because it's heavy in our mouth to say die. It's heavy. And, and that is the high point of our salvation. Your spirit is saved. Your soul is being saved. Or your mind is being saved. And your body will be saved. That's the high point. That's our expectation. That at one, that one day, our body will be changed. Why? Because we must not be found naked. How many of you are comfortable being naked? When I'm comfortable being naked, you are naked and you are walking down the street. <laughs> you know, if, if you are father me or you are, you know, Elsa and all this, you, know, you, 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 nothing. you don't care about that. How many of you are comfortable of being naked? Look, at, let me show you this. I said we should open somewhere before we. Let's see if the Holy Spirit permits me to go there. Uh, where, 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 where did I say now? Okay, First Corinthians five. Go there quickly. Oh, uh, Second Corinthians five, rather. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians five. Are you there? Second Corinthians and chapter five. Say, I have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. I'm seated with Christ Jesus. 
in heavenly places. Far above. Ha! Ah. It's a pity that a man's life, if a man's life, contains only in what they are pursuing every day. Daily bread. I wake up, you know. Ah, oh, I need to get money. <laughs> and as I, as I, as I said, just imagine, imagine a man's life. Imagine a man's life. Think about it. Your life is just about growing up, yeah? Marry, giving back to children, rearing children, and die. Imagine that's your life. Imagine that's all your life. Imagine nothing eternal. Imagine that's your life. No content, no impartation, no eternal influence. Imagine that's your life. That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. It will never be your portion. There's a time to every purpose. You are created to be purposeful. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? There is a fight over your life. A serious one. Serious one. And the kingdom of light has won. But you must make sure that you connect. You're conscious of this and you walk in the reality of it. I'm not saying, I'm not calling you to be a pastor. Though you will be. I'm not calling you to be a prophet. <laughs> though you will be. Are you going to say yes? I'm not calling you to be an apostle, but though you will be. Yes. Apostle, what will it be if all of us are apostles? Have you gone outside? How many people have been saved? <laughs> I, I'm a pastor. How many of you want all of us to be pastors? Go outside. How many people have been saved? Are you going to say yes? The harvest is ripe. Is that, uh, I don't want to be a pastor. Is he pinching? Is he biting? Are you getting ready to say yeah? It's, see, it's not even, see, it's this thing now. It's not even about, you see. Hallelujah. Amen. What is this? Did the water tell itself that it's a bottle of water? If I give you, as I take, who are, <laughs> did, 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 did the water bottle of water told me to give you? Who decided who to give? In me, yes. It is God who is doing the giving. It's not the me, it's not you, it's not the gift. Who is telling the giver? Eh, don't give me, oh, don't give me. Are you going to say, if the giver gives the gift, what should the gift do? Yes, here I am. I shall be given. But 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 listen, but all you care about. Imagine, imagine all. I want to say something that I won't say. I won't say. No, I won't say. It. Ah, I won't say. It. Listen, imagine your life as a small as, and all you can think about is boyfriend and girlfriend. Think about it. No, think about. Think about. It. Listen, 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 listen. No, no, no. Listen. I'm not even saying something you've seen or not seen, but think about it. Think about it. Yeah, I'm not saying you should marry. Okay, but I'm saying that. All you could think about, yeah, your total investment. Listen, you, you, you are investing, listen, investing about eight hours or 12 hours of your day, thinking and worrying about how, why the boy, about a boy and a girl. And you do this for years. And you have not been stable with one. <laughs> are you getting friends? Say, yeah. Imagine, imagine unmarried people, listen. Imagine, imagine unmarried people, unmarried youth are thinking what married people are thinking. Am I coming to get you? Are we together? Unmarried, unmarried people are thinking what married people are thinking. Because married people, Paul, Paul we admonish the married people in 1 Corinthians 7 that let the wife and husband and wife let them give themselves necessary benevolence. He spoke about the marriage bed. He advised the wife. He said, your body is for your wife. Your wife is your body. But the pressure on a single person is out of, is what married people are supposed to be thinking. A, a, an unmarried person is thinking, is having sexual pressure. But the sexual pressure of, ah, I do not satisfy well. He's not satisfy me well. Maybe next time I'll satisfy well. <laughs> Praise God. Listen up, everybody. To everything under the sun. Listen. There's a time and a purpose. God has a big capital. I was telling somebody, when Paul wrote it, Paul said, I wish everybody's like me. He was talking to the singles one. He said, if you are single, I wish you are like me. 
Don't marry. Because they thought that would be the only distraction. It did not come to our days. Are you going to say here? God help us. For 2 Corinthians 5, go there. 2 Corinthians 5. Pursue God. He's with you. He's not far from you. Listen, I'm not saying you should not marry. I will not say that. The Bible says in the last day, said uh, many prophets, prophets will arise. They will forbid to marry. I'm not forbidding you to marry. <laughs> I cannot. If you know, self, I, I, I will help to advise when I notice that, yeah, it's like, you know, there's a purpose around this person. Are we together? Yeah. I pray. I even help, you know, sometimes to trim line, you know, <laughs> the toasting star. <laughs> I help. It's not my responsibility. I just do that as a brother, not as a pastor. But look at <laughs> So, praise God. Look at it. He says, for 2 Corinthians 5, I'm writing up soon. Yes, thank you. I see you. For we know, first, 2 Corinthians 5, for we know that if our earthly house, this tent, he's not talking about this building, you know. If our earthly house, this tent, pay attention to the language of the Bible, is destroyed. He said, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. He said, for in this, we groan, earnestly designed to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. What is our groaning? What is our groaning, everybody? To be clothed with our designer in heaven. Because the one who fashioned it is God. This fashioning is earthly. We are groaning in this. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. But, but there is one that is working mightily in you. You have received the spirit. It is him who will quicken the same. There's a time. Don't be deprived of time. I don't know what is happening in your time. And you are pursuing, just imagine that. You are pursuing unnecessary things. Even when you see visions, when you pro- your prophecies, it's different. Amen. Because you are so, because your desires is different. Some of us, when we prophesy, you can tell what we have been filled of. If I, if, I, if, I, if I shake myself and talk in terms of a few minutes, I, I, I can, you can tell the direction of my prophecy, okay, quickly. You can, you, my probability, tell, that once in a while, you know, I pick things. Okay, I pick things. Hallelujah. The direction will be towards Christ. Hey, towards Christ. It will be towards that. And pastor, should there not be other directions? There will be, there will be other, no, I do other directions. But at the end of the other direction, it's still Christ. It must be Christ. It has to be Christ. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yes. Look at it. Let's, let, I'm running up. So sorry. Okay. Why did I say? Okay. He says, For in this we groan, earnestly designed to be clothed from our habitation, which is from the heavens. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall know what? We shall know what? If we are clothed, we shall know what? Yes. So, for we who are in this tent groan, being burdened not because we want to be unclothed, but, but further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up of life. Now, he who has prepared us for this very same thing is God. And he has given unto us, Kayapa Tosata, the endness of the spirit. So those who die in Christ now, eh, what, do, what does it mean? They are naked. Are you going to read? Those who die in Christ now are naked. We that are in this body. We are groaning that our body will be changed. Clothed with another clothing. And that another clothing, there's a time and a purpose for it. There's a time that it must happen. So it means that now, now that the designer is in God's hand, those who died now in Christ Jesus, they are not wearing the designer yet. So what are they now? They are naked. Naked and waiting for what? For the designer to be clothed. So, you will now know why they say, those that died in Christ shall be forced to be caught up. Why? Because uh, you, 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 even as I speak to us, many of us are not itching. There is no, are you going to try and say, yeah? Eh? The Lord help us. He that is from above is above all. I'm born of God. I'm born of the Spirit. I have an authority in Christ. 
in the name of Jesus. I'm from above and I'm above all. So greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Say, I'm a child of God. I'm a child of God. Say, I refuse to be defeated because I can never be defeated. Say, all things are mine. All things are mine. Say, Christ is my steed. You get that, yeah? I just learned that recently. <laughs> praise, praise, praise God. I just learned that recently. Steez. Steez. Praise God. Say, Christ has become my steez. In the name of Jesus. Say, I am in Christ. Say, I'm in Christ justified. And he is in me glorified. Say, I'm in Christ justified. And he's in me glorified. You're going to pray for the next three minutes. Praise God. I want you to pray. Being conscious of who you are. Pray. Be conscious of who you are. Just pray. Just talk to God. Pray. You can do it in the Holy Ghost. But pray. Pray for your family. What needed to be shaken must be shaken off. Shake things off. Shake things off. Shake things off. Shake things off. Pray for yourself, for your career, for your relationship. Pray, 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 pray. Talk to God. I say, Father, every unnecessary things in my life, I submit to you, shake them off. I shake them off, Father, shake them off. Every unnecessary foundation in my life, anything that is not supposed to grow with me daily, Father, I ask that you shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Anything in my life, in my career, if you are a student, anything that is distracting in your life, say, Lord, I submit to you. Shake it off. 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 In my spiritual experience, everything that is distracting, Father, I submit to you. I ask that you shake them off. Your voice shakes. Your voice shakes. So I yield to your voice. I yield to your voice now, Lord. And everything that is not consistent to your will in my life. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Anything that is related to my family tree. Anything that is related to my family tree. Genetic wise. Whatever. I shake it, shake it off, 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 shake it off. I know who I am. I'm in you. Your spirit is in me. I'm in your spirit. So, Father, I take authority over this. Over my health, I take authority. Talk to God. Say, Lord, I don't want this sickness to repeat itself. I don't like it. I don't like it that I, I struggle in this sickness. I struggled with this pain. I don't like it, Lord. So, I come to you, Father. And I submit to you. And I use the authority over every weakness. I use the authority and I command them to go. By the power of your glory. In the name of Jesus. Talk to God. Exercise. Do your spiritual oppression. Use your spiritual authority. He said, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. And in the power of his might. Be strong in the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes.